Welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. Today we're here with Daniel Stamatis, directly from Mexico City, DF. Um, he has been for over eight years in China and we've been in contact for a while now and um, he has um, a few a very interesting um, bamboo related um, approaches and experiences and uh, a lot of knowledge because uh, you've been like I mean eight years in China well welcome Daniel uh, great to have you on the podcast Jago, thank you very much for your invitation. Such an honor. <laughs> thank you for having me here. Um, so, um, Daniel, um, we're trying again. We had bad internet last time, so this time it's gonna it's gonna work. <laughs> um, so, your um, let's talk a little bit um, what what you have been, where you have been, what you've done, because I think um, your your past is pretty unique if we can say so and uh, maybe you can like give an introduction um how you got to this very unique experience and uh, how it changed your perception and probably even much more other things long story short uh, I, I i'm from mexico I, I was born in in guadalajara in the place of tequila no very close to that town and uh, from, from 2009 to 2011, I was experimenting a lot, trying to design and build with bamboo in the Northwest of Mexico. So I was very out of market, very out of time, a very, very uh, lack of information, a lot of lack of information because it's not today, no? How yeah. much information is running in the internet is crazy. It's really, really crazy. So we can learn much faster. And we are taking advantage of that. And proof of that is this kind of podcast, right? That we can have a conversation, you in Europe and myself in Mexico, and we can share something that, uh, because the conversation is like a creation act, right? Like, like we don't know everything, right? So that was my attitude back then and still my attitude today. So when I was trying to design and build with bamboo in the Northwest Mexico and failing a lot, right? Then uh, the friend of a friend, Mr. Oscar Padilla, contacted me with the CBRC, which is the Chinese National Bamboo Research Center in Hangzhou City in, in China, right? Mm -hmm. So the Chinese government back in 2012 uh, sponsored to me and also like to 50 people all over around the world, every country, every third world country, let's say developing country, okay? So you could find like all Latin America, all Africa, and a lot of uh, Middle East and Southeast Asia. Like all together, studying, uh, directed by the Chinese. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how I arrived to China in the first place, where I could, you know, to explore the possibility and, and to find the, the economic resources to make buildings happen, right? Yeah. And and because uh, I was not an expert at all, and, and I was beginning to trying to, to make use of some of my, let's say my skills and put it in the service of developing the, the bamboo research, then the, the Chinese saw that and and yeah, that was the beginning. That was the beginning. And, and Daniel, how was it? I mean, um, probably like, I mean, this was like another world, right? I mean, another language, another food, uh, climate wise, probably not like, let's say the typical uh, climate in, in, in Mexico either. I don't know, but I mean, China is big too, but Mexico is big too. So everything was different, right? Yeah. I mean, the very first day you can tell, no? like the very first day you arrive from the, from the airport and traveling to the hotel and so on, and everything is just different. You cannot read anything. You cannot uh, understand anything and that happens with anyone going to any country that is not uh, yours okay yeah. so but in that case in my particular personal experience uh because of the chinese uh culture and because my my great grandmother is chinese 100 percent chinese not really? me nothing is chinese and she got married in, in sinaloa mexico in the northwest of mexico with a greek man can you tell that wow so um, that's yes. where your name come from 
Stamatis. Yeah, yeah. Stamatis is Greek. It's Greek yeah, yeah, it's 100% Greek. Uh, and uh, yeah, and that line of the family was mixed with the, with the Chinese culture in the Northwest Mexico. Mm. Many people don't know, but in Northwest Mexico, there is a large community of um, Koreans, Japanese, Chinese, large. Mm -hmm. well, so I'm part of that thing. It's not strange in that part of the world. It is just the way it is there. Yeah, yeah it's where it's the it's the only place probably where where the Chinese language Mandarin and English and Spanish live together in the Northwest Mexico. It's wow. real, it's crazy. There are movies about that. So uh, that's my background, and um, yeah, and, and staying with the Chinese in in Hangzhou, I realized that they at least in that moment they were offering a. Uh, a lot of financial support for research, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they were interested in the course of connecting with Latin American songs. So one way or another, uh, I got one of those scholarships uh, for making a master's in engineering, specializing in landscape architecture, right? Mm -hmm. In Bamboo Landscape Architecture in Nanjing Forestry University. Uh, Professor Ding Yulong was my mentor there, uh, Ding Yulong. And he, he taught me everything, uh, all my beginnings of taxonomy, let's yeah. say taxonomy and the behavior and the biology mm -hmm. are, is coming from Ding Yulong and all that organization. So, so this was a little bit like a gold mine, right? I mean, from getting from, from Mexico where we have some bamboo and, and some buildings to really like where the center of the world for like, I mean, also probably bamboo knowledge building and, and like history, also the like thousands of years of bamboo use in, in China. Uh, you, and you can tell in terms of industry, in terms of economy, right? In mm -hmm. terms of uh, the, the market value. If you put in the table like the $6,000 million per year of only bamboo shoot, for example, right? Only bamboo shoots. Six Only bamboo shoots. Thousand. According to the statistics, of course, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, yeah, but... Like, but according to the papers and the, the you know, uh, mm -hmm. that's more or less the in that industry. Only in wow. that industry. Well, and they say that uh, my Chinese friends listening right now, uh, you you can uh, comment below and everything. But uh, it's only the beginning. The industry is very young, right? Mm -hmm. It's just the start. So uh, I, all these years during my stay in China, I was asking myself, like, how, how is this possible? How is education so expensive in our countries, right? Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, you have like like, uh, like the Chinese government paying to foreigners to study a topic that they have. And, and yeah. yeah, so it's like uh, playing the long run game and, and, and bamboo is like part Long of term. System. Coming along with the with the package, so uh, there are many things to learn. There are many things to develop. And so thanks for making this podcast possible. And and um, probably like it, I, I imagine I don't know, but I imagine it was like this very different attitude to bamboo in the Chinese mindset than the Latin American mindset, or is it like similar? in ways to like being the timber for poor people or stuff like that. Is this still like something in Asia or has it never been? Or are there other challenges there? The cultural values of bamboo, right? Uh, it's like, let's put this in this way. Like if you, let's talk about eating pork, okay? The, the meat to pork, right? Yeah. Okay. In, in China, of course, uh, the culture, the tradition, or the, the customs is that if you are in the pork industry, you use everything of the pork. You use the little catalog of the year. You, you use the, you know, everything. Everything, yes. You make it beautiful, presentable, uh, valuable, and delicious in many cases, right? So uh, the same with bamboo, no? So they have bamboo as, as well as Africa, as well as Latin America, as well as many countries. But China has it as well and mm -hmm. use it a lot, <laughs> like as much as possible, right? Mm -hmm. they, like all kinds of recipes for all kinds of products and they are developing and researching and patenting and everything, no? And, and the machinery of research and publications is yes. big, <laughs> like, like huge. Really. <laughs> Publishing is something, it's probably one of the hardest things I have ever done in my life. Writing, 
then it was pretty much because of the support of the Chinese infrastructure, right? Wow. So yeah. this is interesting too, because it just came to my mind that actually this is like the permaculture principle, you know? There is no such thing as waste. It's just unused resources. And that's one of the big issues probably on, on the planet right now. We have all those not used resources and and bamboo, which we're not using enough. Like we could use it much more. And, and yes. there, I think uh, you come in play with um, your mindset and your ideas now where... Um, also regarding bamboo and public domain and, and uh, democratizing um, like bamboo constructions for everybody. Maybe you can share some thoughts there. Oh, well, yes. The, the idea is, is we all know and it's very, uh, we, nobody knows the real number, but we all know that more than half of buildings on the planet are self-constructed. You know? Like people just get the material and... and, and... How much percent? like like 60 percent like okay a lot like yeah. more than half here the experts please comment below below how much the percentage of the of, of self-construction is in the planet is a big big number right big no okay okay in that sense if we build it why not can why don't self-design it no so we many times we leave the let's say the work or the the thinking process of design to architects, of people who study, you know, or or that, you know, took some kind of master or something about the topic. However, if you analyze, once you are in the design industry, for example, if you analyze the exact steps that takes to anyone, you know, to, to make reasonable decisions, reasonable design decisions, mm -hmm. To go from zero to having something, you know, maybe not the best whatever thing in the world, but something that doesn't fall down. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. Okay, that's the goal. Yeah, you go on with your creativity. That's fine, but you must be on time because any construction is a business. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that you have like a like an architecture office or building office. No, it's not like that. It's only if you're building, you're running a business. Because budget is running, because resources are limited, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. we should think, think about bamboo construction in any level as, as a business, okay? So mm -hmm. the business is solving any kind of problem, solve problems in business ways. That, that's what we want to, to practice okay. or at least try, no? Like mm -hmm. this philosophy of Mohammed Junus Nobel Prize of 2006, like, like business models, like, like social businesses. He calls it social business, solve problems in business ways. So... The construction, as it is a business, how are we going to design it? So we are trying to, uh, yes, to put it outside at least, you know, to put the option there. Like, look, this is a method. Uh, anyone can follow it. If you're a professional, that's fine. That's lovely. You're going with your resources and knowledge. You're going to inform this, this animal, this structure with that. No, But if you don't have experience and so on, and, and, and you're just like, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, a chemical engineering trying to do something new you know and you are retired but you still have a lot of energy and you can you want to raise your resources on designing crazy architecture no yeah. then okay you can get as crazy as you want okay as long as you follow these five simple small controllable tasks mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and you like, trust like uh, ikea furniture like simplified Exactly, just but in the in the mental area, not in the physical yeah. area. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a it's a mental uh, structure, mm -hmm. which you you cannot see. That's the thing. You mm -hmm. cannot see. The only requirement is that you follow <laughs> the five steps. And after, steps. after you follow and finish the five steps, then we discuss. Okay, then mm -hmm. we stop. Then we fix. Then we change. Then we yeah, many things. But we have to cross like that and, and the, in that way you can release the creative potential with or without experience at the same time that you control time during the creative phase of the project mm -hmm. and i don't know if our friends here listening know this or not but controlling time during the creative phase of any project is one of the hardest things to to do right mm -hmm. 
yeah. to, to do something under a uh, time. timeline. Yeah. Yeah. Even so, more if you're creative and, and, and you start like focusing maybe on too many details and you should like you should you're on time and, and you have to like stop and, and maybe later and yeah that's yeah and it's it's simple than it seems you know and, and this mm -hmm. bamboo structural things this bamboo structural design of course we have to refine the decisions with the structural engineering we should in the best case of scenarios we should uh cross information with software you know with simulations mm -hmm. uh, to earthquakes to winds and so on but before that before that we sh should be able right, to have structures by ourselves makes sense to you Mm -hmm. that will be fantastic of course yeah yeah so that's the the public domain bamboo um democratizing bamboo by public domain approach let's say yeah, let's let's discuss a little bit i mean democratize is like yes it's open okay but it's not for everybody it's of not course. for everybody it cannot be for everybody yeah, it's only for those who, leak, of course, right? Of course, but so, it's the same um, thing with democracy. It's not for everybody. If if you don't want to like uh, read about like ideas or or uh, different attempts, it's it's the same thing, right? <laughs> Even then, there is no uh, guarantee. It's gonna you're gonna get the result you you've been told. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so it's pretty much. Uh, one thing that I learned in the in the academy, because look publicly, I I can say that I am a natural academic. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I'm just crossing the academy because it has my way of uh, connecting with resources to explore, to design, to build, and and I, I get along with the academy very good. Like I'm very happy there. I'm, I'm always for all my life. I have decided now that I will always stay in an academic position one way or another, as mm -hmm. I am now. Right and. Yeah. But in the beginning, it was not my initial intention to a master's, then a PhD, then be No, it was never my, my, my. However, uh, the scientific method, it, uh, until certain point, works because what we do is to test hypotheses, and, yeah. and that's not rocket science at all. Yeah. You have like a lot of perceptions. You put it on testing, and you're talking about the bamboo structural design. And then we produce feedback and conversation and refine the hypothesis and improve the hypothesis, mm -hmm. right? So until this point, thanks to the academy, I have, uh, let's say, simplify, okay? Mm -hmm. a, a minimum of action, right? That will take you to a successful, hopefully, uh, bamboo construction, yeah. right? Bamboo mm -hmm. construction. So uh, for that, uh, I have uh, practically guaranteed that we that we follow four iteration of the bamboo model of the bamboo scale model. Four iterations, four okay in scales. Mm -hmm. We have enough information to take the risk and make the fifth iteration in real scale in scale one to one, right? Like like yeah, and yeah. that involves like uh, I mean in the in the third iteration, mix it with the tools. So when you but talk about set, iterations, so they're like prototypes, but physical prototypes or physical prototypes. Yeah, physical yeah. prototype. The first iteration is mm -hmm. just after following the five, five steps process, right? Mm -hmm. Is the is let's say is the genesis creation. After you follow the five steps process, you have the genesis of the structure, and then what's next is to refine that direction. What you have, what you have is a direction of the research. You don't have a final result. You have a direction what to investigate, right? Mm -hmm. You just follow the path. Then you improve it one time, and then you get feedback again, this and that, and change, blah, blah, blah. No? And then mm -hmm. you improve it a third time, right? And with that third result, now, okay, let's go, structural engineers. Okay, let's see the market of structural engineering, okay? And there mm -hmm. are a few, and we're improving some, but discuss it, mm -hmm. right? Even though you are one of those. I mean, if you are a, you have to produce the feedback. So once we get the feedback of structural calculation and produce according information about that, we produce a next model. And that next model after the structural engineering feedback is so refined 
you know, it's so refined that if you see it for the first time and you don't know the process and you just see it, mm -hmm. it's going to impress you one way or another. Yes or yes. It's going to be impressive, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because we know in our brains, we know that in one single step, we cannot achieve that beauty. We cannot. It's impossible. Tell me who. I mean, can be, can be, can be, okay? Can be, can happen. But methodologically speaking, like if you really want to go there, save, and, and we control resources, control time, control money. Four steps. All the steps. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's the easiest, you know? The, the problem with this thing is like any language, for example, Chinese. Mm -hmm. Oh, Chinese, speaking Chinese is very difficult. It's not. It's just that, that if you don't know, it's impossible, you know? But if you know the structure, if you know this, it's going to be really, really easy. Okay. So that's <laughs> they say, a little idea out there. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, um, and, and what's your, um, what's your, let's say, what's your goal with this, um, um, how do we call it? Um, how, or how do you call it? Your four I, step approach. I call it the protocol of creation for bamboo architecture. I call it like that. I, I didn't invent the name. I didn't okay. invent the name. It was invented by one of the participants actually. Cool. And before I used to call it five steps, I don't know what. And then in one of the mails or meetings or something, somebody was, uh, and then he mentioned the protocol of creation and he brought, okay, that's it. The protocol that's, of creation, yeah, it just. That's the oh, name. The protocol of creation for bamboo, bamboo structures. Or bamboo architectural concepts, I would say. Bamboo, bamboo architectural, okay, okay. Yeah, that's, bamboo, that's very important to say, that concepts, because it, it's not the calculation, mm -hmm. it's not the uh, construction drawings, no. no. It's the moment of the process where it doesn't exist, you just have a problem, you just have an idea, you just have a, mm -hmm. maybe a land, uh, an intention, something that is pushing you, mm -hmm. right, to, to go there, but doesn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the moment from creation, you know, is, is, uh, is not about inspiration, you know, it's not about motivation. All those things are so overrated. Mm -hmm. it, it's like fantasy it, that is sovereign period like doesn't work like that okay, okay? yeah that if you're a dog cultural whatever background you have if you follow some specific protocol mm -hmm. you can do it like it's not rocket science and could like any sport you practice you improve right but the principle is the same so and now if anybody who wants to try it out, are you, um, is there, are, are, is there a PDF or what's the, what's the approach? Well, what I would do if, if, if I want to search if this kind of method is for me or not, what I would do to explore that is to go to my website to choose do it.com slash program. Mm -hmm. And then, then you can read everything and got all the information you can possibly get. And if you still think that this could be for you, then there is a red button that says, uh, apply for a free diagnostic call. So we will have a 30 minutes conversation and figure out if this is really, really for you. And if it's for you, then we move forward. If it doesn't, if it is not for you, then uh, at least the, least the last thing I can do is to provide any kind of information that is in my power to, to, to help your true path. You know, you're through whatever you want to do. That's fine. But is this really for you? Then uh, I will tell you exactly what to do in order to, to enroll and to create uh, a bamboo structure by yourself, basically, or, or with your team, you know, you can bring your team you want and, and cross through the five-step process and learn to systemize, to systematize, how, how say that? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, make a system, system across this kind of design decisions, including... Uh, Bamboo as a structural material. So I just want to mention that this method is not something that I invented at, at all. Okay. At all. Okay. At all. I, it's not my method. No, 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 no. Let's not confuse things. This method is a mix of three things. Okay. It's a mm -hmm. mix of three things. 
Number one, the prototyping methods of the fast prototyping methods of companies such as Google or Facebook in Silicon Valley that they have systemized this kind of thinking process. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I took that. And then the architectural design process that, that I learned in Barcelona, in Spain, like long, long time ago from Miguel Roldan, my prof, my, my teacher, Miguel Roldan. He's very, mm -hmm. very famous in Barcelona. And he taught me that and a focus in architecture. And the third thing is all about bamboo as a building material, you know? Mm -hmm. That's the third element of this thing. So we put these things together, uh, the fast prototyping uh, methods of Silicon Valley, and then the architectural processes of, of Barcelona, and then the, the bamboo knowledge, let's say, with Colombian bases, with Chinese bases, and a lot of masters around, like I have been collecting. And then you put everything together, and you put it in the service of a project, and, and yeah, and it's guaranteed, like, it's not that I guarantee, but I have never seen failing something like this. Never. If you follow the steps, you are out. No, no question. But you could, you could uh, make a ISO standard out of this method, probably. I, I think that I think that is more business oriented than academy oriented. It, it's okay. like an intent, it's an effort to to at least what we are doing now is where we are focusing pretty much. In uh, even though anyone can do it, we are focusing pretty much in excellent architectural offices, you know, mm -hmm. that maybe don't have the time to spend eight or ten years in traveling and studying and 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 reading and writing and everything. They are just on business already. They are already mm -hmm. successful, you know, and mm -hmm. they want to get aligned into the market demand. The market is demanding a lot of sustainable architecture. Open spaces, you know, creative forms and and creative like uniqueness, form. right? Yeah, that's the blessing of the COVID nineteen. It's a blessing for the industry. Yeah, yeah. Even before it was like, oh, bamboo is so expensive, and now it's like, oh, it's it's not even that expensive, right? Like the the mindset change and and all that after this uh, pandemic. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, life sometimes. Um, another thing I wanted to um, like quickly discuss with you is like um, with bamboo, it's like I think even like it's it's a, such a unique material and the, the regarding, you know, the, the structures which are possible and which have been already built with bamboo, there is like, of course, there are always limits, but the limits are more bendable with bamboo, literally. Is this... Something you um, have, or is this something true, or is it just like? Mm, I mean, I, what what comes to my mind with those words is that it, it's a it's a mistake, an initial mistake that many of us make, and and I I made it, I made that mistake, and let me tell you this quick story, okay. Mm -hmm. It's it my first year. Is it my first, my first year in I mean, in my PhD studies, no? As a PhD student, from my supervisor to my supervisor, Professor Tang Gani, and and he trust me, the conceptual design of a rural extension, okay, mm -hmm. in a in a rural hotel, okay, surrounded by mosso bamboo, full of of mosso bamboo, and they already built with bamboo. Exposed bamboo, not protected by design, not preserved, but they already use it. Okay. So my supervisor sees this Mexican guy in China trying to make something in, with bamboo in China. So he gives me that project, okay? And then we propose a bamboo structure and everything, okay, and so on. And the villagers, the people living there, rejected. They didn't want bamboo. Their own bamboo. Their own bamboo in their own place, rejected and brought a metallic scaffolding to, to keep, to, to, to really respect the architectural design, the spaces, they love it, mm -hmm. everything they love, no? Yeah. Except the bamboo as a structural material. In, instead, they brought metallic scaffolding mm -hmm. and the project was built in metallic scaffolding and there are pictures and everything. And, and everybody's uh, happy. <laughs> everybody was like, yeah. And there are many reasons around that, like, like uh, many reasons, like probably the aspirations for the modernity of the rural guys, uh, maybe the lack of information about the economic potential of their own bamboo forest and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Okay? Mm -hmm. But uh, the question arises, like, like, 
how can we propose bamboo in a way that cannot be substituted by any other material? Okay, mm -hmm. and it's not a question. It's not a question about everything should be made by bamboo. No, no, I don't believe that. I believe that it has its particular moment, its particular point, and its particular uses mm -hmm. to, to be applied. Really but tough. for those moments, for those times when you do apply bamboo architect uh, bamboo structures, okay, when you do propose that, mm -hmm. how can you can we use it in order to make sense economically, right, and don't be able to substitute. Uh, by any other material. So that was uh, my mistake in that moment, my request in that moment. So I began religi religiously to study the local bamboo before designing anything. If you can bend, let's go bending. If you cannot bend that easily, maybe not, we don't have a uh, specializing uh, in very good uh, broadmanship in that region, we better go easy on that. Thing, no? But if you are in the Indonesia and you can have a lot of detailing premises, okay, let's go and do this. So we take that, those decisions very early, mm -hmm. you know, before yeah. designing anything. We mm -hmm. have to make this kind of quick research to see what we actually have and don't make any now, yes, now crazy ideas of trying to apply a Colombian, like I did, a Colombian construction method in rural China, you know, so what I had to do in order to compensate my efforts is to write about that, <laughs> you, know, you, you know, like what happened here because I proposed something that didn't work. So that was my acad academic research, yeah. you know, like what's going on there. So uh, reflecting that, I would say that if it bends, it bends. If it doesn't bend, uh, don't don't try. Like like uh, like try to know like that mixture of craftsmanship level and species available, you know, and, and economic available. Like I have eight questions before beginning a project, a specific eight questions that before beginning, you answer those questions mm -hmm. and you are safe, you know, you are safe for making awful mistakes later on where you have to go back and lose time and money. No, no, no. So yeah, everything is, is like a script pretty much. It's like a script. And uh, it reminds me a lot of artificial intelligence in a way. It's not artificial in the sense that you don't put it in a machine, but mm -hmm. it's all a script that you follow and it's going to bring results. And that's yeah. fascinating. And I don't know where it can go after this.